Um, have you seen the movie Farha? I have. I want to know your thoughts on it. Uh, and actually, I will say this: um, Darin Salam, who the director, is coming to Palestine. Oh, right? great! Yeah, that's amazing. And this is a, a Netflix film, by the way. Just in case people don't know, it's uh, excellent. Susan, you can describe it, but uh, it was, of course, accused of being anti-Semitic. Farha is um, a, a, a wonderful, relatively short film uh, about one experience during the Nakba. And it's it was remarkable, particularly because it's really the first time that we have seen our um, trauma, you know, sort of reflected in popular media. As a matter of fact, we don't get to see ourselves reflected in any human way in popular media, which is part of the, the reason for Palestine rights. So there was Mo, I don't know if you saw that yeah. series. It's literally the first time we've ever seen, you know, a Palestinian human being or reflected as a human, you know, seeing somebody in the fullness of their humanity and their lives and their, their silliness and, and, you know, uh, and, you know, bad decisions and all of that. It just happened in 2022. I mean, that's, I mean, that's how demonized and vilified we are in this society. And, um, and then, you know, and then on the heels of that, Farha came and it was such a moment for us. Like, I, so many of us hesitated to watch it. I mean, I can't tell you how many of my friends um, were, you know, they wanted to watch it, but they just couldn't because it's, you know, the Nakba is still real and raw. And um, it's it, based it, on a true story also. It is absolutely. And, you know, the thing, and, but I did watch it because I, um, I also had hesitation too. I was kind of bracing myself and I'll, I'll admit I had a couple of glasses of wine to first. Um, and it was, it was really beautifully done. Um, I, I didn't, there wasn't so much, there was, there was a lot left up to the imagination. Um, and she didn't, which was why it was so masterful. She didn't have to show everything and it was, specifically told from that little girl's point of view who could only see out of that one little hole. So, so during the, the Nakba is when um, it was the process of when Israel sort of committed a series of massacres and pogroms to drive out Palestinians from their homes and their villages. And then they went in and they would raise the villages to prevent Palestinians from returning. They also robbed the villages and robbed the people leaving and, and just sort of took everything. And um, in this one particular village, the, um, the, the, the Israel is declared and these Israeli soldiers come into, um, they're, they're coming into the village. And the, uh, the, the father, who was the muhtar of the village, hides his daughter in, um, uh, in a machzan. Um, what, I don't know what the word is in English. It's just kind of a closet. It's a machzan. It's a, like a, a machzan is like. A cellar? Is it a cellar? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a food cellar where people, Pan, yeah, yeah under, a pantry. Around, yeah. And he locks her in there. Uh, and she just, she sees what's happening outside just through this one little hole um, that she carves out. And she sees, you know, really terrible things. She sees this one whole family sort of killed and before her eyes. Um, and they, they don't really show it. And then you, there was a baby that was born and you just hear the baby crying and, um, and then it stops crying, but you don't see, you know, you don't see anything. So there's a lot left to the imagination, but it was, um, it meant a lot to really, to, to see that, to, to see a story from this great trauma that we all, we all have stories of the Nakba. Every Palestinian has a, a, a hugely traumatic story. And it's really, no matter what divides us, whether, whether they're political divisions, whether they are geographic or now linguistic or economic divisions, 
uh, or religious divisions, we all sort of have this common wound that we share. Um, you know, in much in the same way, I guess it is for Jews, you know, no matter what the differences are, there is this sort of common um, uh, anguish that that is the Holocaust. The difference is that um, the Holocaust is, has been acknowledged. You know, there is there's no there's no equivocating about it. There are monuments and museums and um, uh, and memorials all over the world. And it's built into a lot of educate mainstream it's education. Right. Curriculum, and, yeah. and, it, and it's, um, uh, you know, of, of every other people. I mean, it, it has probably the most stories told in film um, and, and, and other popular media outlets. And that, you know, that's part of the, the restitution and the healing that we've never had that. We've never had an acknowledgement. We've never had a moment to see ourselves reflected and in a way that is sympathetic. And so that's what Farha meant to us here. Um, it, it was huge, it's monumental. And it's such a small film and you would think that, you know, how can one small thing do that? But it does because, and, and when, it, when it does that, it makes you realize how, um, how humiliated you have been as a people and how you continue to be that you are so happy and excited and thrilled to see this, to, to be so happy to see Mo and, and feel like, you know, like you're going to cry over this silly, you know, funny com comedy of a series. Um, and when, and, and then, you know, you examine your own feelings about such a thing and, you know, and the only realization you can come to is that this is just, this is the depth of our humiliation. This is the depth of our exclusion. This is how, how demeaned we are in the society that um, we're just going not, we're all going nuts on Twitter about it.